going to be run for the President of the United States, the Governor of this state. What message would you like to communicate as a citizen of this town to those top people? And the only thing that comes to mind just offhand is the war that's going on now. Of course, I'd like to see that ended immediately. But I'm sure he's already working on that. I don't really know. Like we did in the service, they forget about a person's other nationality, the color of his skin, or the way his eyes look, and just treat him as a human being, I think uh, would help a lot of it. But most of this racial stuff and that that we're having, that they bring on themselves. You see in just about every disturbance, it's the, uh, it's the Mexican or Mexican-American that calls attention to his race. It's a Negro that calls attention to his color. The ordinary white man doesn't say, well, he's black, so I don't want to talk to him. It's a, it's a black man that calls attention to his own color. Personally, I've lived next door to a family of Mexicans, Americans, for the last 11 years, and we've never had a rough a bad word between us, and probably never will. I worked on a ship, I worked in the fire room on the ship, and in charge of the fire room, out of 35 men, I had 28 of them with colored. I didn't have any trouble. But just like I told them when I first went in, you do your job right, and that's the way you be treated. You do a bad job, and I don't care what you are or who you are, you're going to get the dirty job. But if you do a good job, you'll be treated accordingly and you'll get the benefit of your, of your doings. And I think that's uh, the only, only rule for any of them to live by is just get your rewards by, by the work that you do. I think the reason that they don't get by any better than they do because they don't have the knack of spread making their money stretch. In other words, they make $100 one week and $50 the next week. They live on $100 one week, next week they've got to do it on $50. They don't average it out and say, well, we'll live on 75 a week. But they, uh, they just go whole hog on whatever they get. We said that the average was 4500 and we said that the migrant worker brought it down. So his, average would, his income would have to be less than, quite a bit less than 4500 which would mean that, that it's not a budgeting problem, it's a problem of low income, period. I would say the average uh, migratory worker's income isn't over 3000 at the most. I know uh, quite a few people that come in the store when they're working, and a man and his wife, working when they work, can bring home $180 a week. Easy. And most of them around here work all, I mean, the people that live in town, I'm not talking about transients, they work almost year round. But you see, there's an awful lot of our, awful lot of our population that is a transit. No, that's true. They're migratory. There's just, there's very few people that stay here all year round. There's a lot of them own homes here, stays here, uh, that here, but they're, they're not here. They, they go to Marysville and Yuba City, they go up Morton or Oregon, and they go back to Mexico for, for two or three months and then back here again, and uh, yeah. so you don't know. When, when they go to, uh, like you said, when they go to Marysville or Springville or up north where they work, they're working all the time. Well, there's an awful lot of that wage that you call uh, that is lost in transit. It costs them so much to work. I know I used to work in the lettuce over in Salinas Valley. And uh, we go to Blythe or El Centro in the winter. By the time uh, the job started, you had to be there a week or two ahead of the sheds opening or the job starting, well, by the time they started and you got your first paycheck, you owed it all. So you really wasn't making, uh, making too much there. And it was the same way when they moved back to Salinas. Of course, Salinas was a nine-month season when you got started there. I've done just a little bit of picking one summer, tried to augment my income, and I found I couldn't make any money at all at it. By the time I, if I paid 50 cents an hour for a babysitter and then made a dollar 20 an hour picking, it's not worth it. I might as well stay home. No, I, I'm not saying they, uh, they make a uh, lot of money. I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't trying to imply that. Uh, their income is low. Uh, it is. A uh, farm worker's income is low. There's no getting around that. The ones that moved in, like they come from Texas or oh, Mexico or back there, they, uh, they don't have the education or the opportunity. Uh, that a white person would have. Most of the ones I want to school with now do. Uh, they would have just as much 
opportunity as I would because they, they have the education. They don't really have the same education you do. I, I teach at Lindsay. Uh, we have classes that are 80% Mexican-American, Spanish-speaking people, and those are the low-track classes. And then we have classes that are 90% non, you know, and maybe, yeah. maybe three people who, with Spanish as an original language will make it into that upper track because they just don't have the, the background. They haven't been working with the language as long as you have. I think that any of them uh, that has been here any length of time through our school should be able to pass the test. Uh, personally, I, I had a ninth grade education and I didn't have any trouble with the test. In fact, uh, last year I went and took the test for postmaster. I come out with 85, 85 average on it, which isn't bad. I was low out of the four of us, but <laughs> still 85 isn't a bad overall average uh, on a test. I'd still be willing to bet that, that most of the people, Spanish people in the town couldn't pass the test. Well, I don't say that they could. I say that they've had the opportunity to learn that they should be able to if they'd pay attention to their studies. If they speak Spanish, that's all they speak, no English in the home. Right. They would have a much harder problem. But most of, the, most of the kids are growing up now, the young kids, they do speak English in the home, or at least uh, most of the ones I know, you know, that I'm associated with. In fact, I, I, uh, one of my best friends is uh, a Mexican from Lane Cove. And his kids are real smart. They're not, none of them are behind, and uh, they're smarter, smarter than my, than my kid. You know, they're the same grade she is. And they don't have any problems at all. I think every kid in town knows me anyway. But uh, I know that most of them, you see there are very few of them speaking the Spanish language away from home. They might at home, which I don't know well, about. But uh, if you to and from school and that, uh, unless they don't want the other kids to understand what they're saying. And still, they grow up until they're five years old, having very little contact with, with the middle class society. And so that when they get into school, they're behind already. And gradually, they, they, uh, they have a hard time overcoming the handicap anyway. If, if this situation was so, if it was proved up statistically, can you foresee uh, any possible uh, help or cure for it? No, I think the, uh, what is it, the preschool program they have is a, a big help. I think so. They, uh, this, this building right here is used for that. They bring the kids when they're four years old and just start introducing them to middle class society, things that they've never seen before possibly, like crayons and drawings and uh, the things you see around you in this room. I think that's, a, that's one thing. They, they give them hammers and nails and, and uh, try to teach them things that, that all the other kids grew up with just naturally. What, in your estimation, are the strengths of Farmersville? It's a place to live. I like a small town. I, uh, I moved to Fresno, and, and I lived there about four or four and a half years, and I, I just don't like a large city, so I came back. I, I just don't like to live in a big town. You, you know everyone, you know all your neighbors, and you know, I, I just happen to like a small town, I guess. I wouldn't live in a big city. I've been, in fact, the big city in the world. <laughs> And uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't live in one. In fact, that's one of the reasons I let slingers get too big for me. A oh, small town, you can you can go where you want to and when you want to, and, and uh, well, maybe it's just more freedom of movement. I like room to move around. In my home, uh, that I want to do what I want to do. I do my welding and building things. That, that I keep my boat and I do what I want to. I could have lived in in town for in a uh, big city for ten years and not have known anyone. Here I can't get by one day without <laughs> having my neighbors in. <laughs> if you knew this film was going to be run or shown to every man, woman, and child in Farmersville, what particular message would uh, you like to give them? Well, all I, all I could say is just uh, have a little consideration for the others before you speak out. Put yourself in his boots and, and see uh, how you would like it, in other words. I think what he said is true, and, and also what I said a minute ago, that there's so many factions, each one against the other one. If people could look at the other faction and see what they have to offer, 
and uh, see what their problems are, and we might be able to settle some of the problems. We have a few in this town that uh, can only see one side of the picture, and uh, I guess they're that way in every town. But they, where they stand out is because it is a small town, and they had a position where a lot of the people that live here, in fact, there's a big majority of them live here, elderly people, and they're on uh, retirement, and they don't want to be bothered. They've lived their life. They've run their town, so to speak, and uh, they just a, a place for them to live their life out. I, I think along the same lines. I think uh, there's a lot of conflict between people, organizations, and uh, if they would stop and just stop and think for a while, maybe what the other guy's got on his mind, you know, it, it would help considerably.